So, what we have learnt in the previous two lectures is the Heisenberg's formulation of quantum mechanics and two things that we have learnt so far are number one that quantities like x t or v t or other derived quantities are to be expressed as a collection of numbers which we now know are matrices. So, I will write as matrices and I will write this for example, if I were to express x t, I would write this as x 1 1, x 1 2 and x 1 2 has a time dependence i omega 1 2 t, x 1 3 e raised to i omega 1 3 and so on, x 2 1 e raised to i omega 2 1 t, x 2 2, x 2 3 e raised to i omega 2 3 t t here and so on. Notice that if a quantity is time independent that means it does not depend on time all the off diagonal terms anything containing e raised to i omega 1 2 t omega i 1 2 1 3 t would be 0 and the matrix would be diagonal. Let me also point out that omega 1 2 is equal to omega 2 1 with a minus sign in front which is minus e 2 minus e 1 divided by h cross, h cross is h over 2 pi. So, that much is something that we have learned about the kinematic part of the theory and then we obtain the quantum condition. which said that 2 pi m summation of alpha equals minus infinity to infinity omega n plus alpha to n modulus c n plus alpha n square minus omega n n minus alpha mod of c n n minus alpha square is equal to h. And then we also express this as 4 pi m summation of alpha equals minus infinity to infinity omega n plus alpha n mod c n plus alpha n square equals h. This can also be written as I will take the first condition summation minus infinity to infinity omega n plus alpha n mod c n plus alpha n square minus omega n n minus alpha mod c n n minus alpha square equals h cross that is also equivalent condition. So, these are all equivalent. I just wanted to clarify something here before I proceed further and that is Along the way while deriving this condition we used that c n n plus alpha was equal to c star n plus alpha n or equivalently c n n minus alpha is equal to c star n minus alpha n and sometimes a question is raised particularly in light of that we base all this in correspondence principle where we had said that c tau was equal to c minus tau star and the question that arises question is that c tau suppose it corresponds to in quantum mechanically c n to n minus tau then c minus tau should it be c n minus tau n or c n n plus tau that is a question 
and what I have claimed is what I have shown in blue on this screen and the reason for this is as follows. Recall that C tau corresponds to the frequency tau omega and C minus tau corresponds to the frequency minus tau omega and tau omega quantum mechanically goes to E n minus E n minus tau divided by h cross. Correspondingly minus t tau omega would go to E n minus tau minus E n divided by h cross and not E n minus E n plus tau divided by h cross. It does not go to this and therefore, the correct coefficient for the negative tau quantum mechanically would be E n minus tau minus E n and the corresponding coefficient c would be c n minus tau n and not c n to n plus tau. So, this has been done very carefully and everything is consistent. What we are going to do now is write what the condition on the dynamical condition should be. So, what Heisenberg proposed that the equation of motion satisfied by x t is the same as the classical equation of motion. That means, x double dot t which is same as d 2 x over d t square is going to be equal to f x divided by m except that now each x and each f x has to be calculated using these matrices. And then you solve the problem. What we are going to do now is apply Heisenberg's method to a harmonic oscillator which also he did in his paper. He took an approach whereby he considered the n-harmonic oscillator. So, the equation for that is x double dot plus omega 0 square x plus some coefficient beta x square equals 0. He took an harmonic oscillator so that he could use his product conditions. We are going to take a slightly different route because I do not want you to get bogged down on how to solve for an anharmonic oscillator. So, we are going to borrow something from correspondence principle. So, I am going to borrow to solve the problem from the principle and what I borrow here is that delta n remember we derived can be maximum plus or minus 1. Heisenberg in his paper considered the anharmonic oscillator equation and could obtain delta n equals plus minus 1 in the lowest order approximation for omega. We are going to assume that and our basis of that assumption is going to be borrowing this thing from the correspondence principle. Right, so, this is what we are going to do. So, let us write step by step number 1 x t representation is going to be a collection of numbers of c n n minus 1 or c n n plus 1 because maximum n change could be 1 and the corresponding frequency here let it be omega n n minus 1 and omega n n plus 1. So, that the time dependence can be written as let me write that in a different color c n n minus 1 e raise to i omega n n minus 1 t and the other one as c n n plus 1 e raise to i omega n n plus 1 t that is the time dependence. Number 2 equation of motion is the same as the classical equation of motion which says that x double dot plus omega naught square x 
is equal to 0. Let us substitute for one of the components. So, I am going to get for example, for the C n, n minus 1, I am going to get minus omega n, n minus 1 square plus omega 0 square C n, n minus 1 outside I am going to have e raised to i omega n, n minus 1 t is equal to 0 and this immediately gives me that omega n, n minus 1 is equal to omega 0. In the same manner, I am going to get minus omega n, n plus 1 square C n, n plus 1 plus omega 0 square C n, n plus 1 is equal to 0 and this imp will imply omega n, n plus 1 is equal to omega 0, but with a minus sign. All right, keep this in mind because 1 is the frequency when the electron is making a jump from the upper to the lower level and that we have been taking as positive frequency, the other one is going to be a negative frequency. So, once that is clear from the classical equation of motion, we are ready to apply our quantum conditions. And quantum condition says that 2 pi n m summation over alpha omega n plus alpha n mod c n plus alpha n square minus omega n n minus alpha mod c n n minus alpha mod square is equal to h. Now, alpha in this case is plus or minus 1 because delta n is plus or minus 1. Now, alpha equal to 1 gives you 2 pi m omega 0 that is n plus 1 to n mod c n plus 1 n square minus omega 0 mod c n n minus 1 mod square and alpha equals minus 1 will give me 2 pi m minus omega 0 mod c n minus 1 n square minus 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 plus omega 0 mod c n n plus 1 mod square and sum of the two would give me h. And you add the two terms, you are going to get 4 pi m omega 0 c n plus 1 n mod square minus c n n minus 1 mod square is equal to h. That is what quantum condition gives me. All right. So, this is the quantum condition and this can help me determine c n, c n plus 1 n. Uh, what I have used here, I have also used that c n n plus 1 mod square is same as mod c n plus 1 n mod square and same thing about c n n minus 1. So, what quantum condition has given me now is that 4 pi m omega 0 c n plus 1 n mod square minus c n my n comma n minus 1 mod square is equal to h or c n plus 1 n mod square minus c n n minus 1 mod square equals h over 4 pi m omega 0. And this immediately implies the solution is very straightforward that c n n minus 1 is equal to n h over 4 pi m omega 0 which I can also write plus some constant. Remember Heisenberg had said that that constant should be determined from quantum conditions. This I can also write as n h cross over 2 m omega 0 plus some constant. Now, we are going to use some physics. Physics is no transition to 
lower level takes place from the ground state that is n equal to 0 and this implies that c n equal to 0 n minus 1 should be equal to 0 which immediately tells you from this equation that constant is equal to 0. So, taking the harmonic oscillator equation the first step the classical equation gave me that omega n n minus 1 is equal to omega 0 for all n's and omega n n plus 1 is minus omega 0 for all n's. Number 2 we applied the quantum condition right that is what we did. We applied the quantum condition and got that mod C n n minus 1 square is equal to n h over 2 m omega 0. What about the energy of the system? So, we have gotten these transition matrix elements. Now, energy since energy is conserved only diagonal elements of energy matrix are not equal to 0 because if there were diagonal elements they will necessarily involve e raised to i omega t and that would make it time dependent. So, if I want to calculate the energy for the nth level this would be equal to 1 half m v square for the nth level plus 1 half k x square for the nth level and this is 1 half m in quantum mechanical notation it will be v n n square because that is the diagonal term plus 1 half k is m omega 0 is square x n n is square and that will be the energy for the nth level. This is what we need to calculate now for the system to get the nth level energy and let us do that next. What is x? This is represented by those C n numbers. So, x t square n n would be nothing but summation according to our rule C n n prime C n prime n right that is what it is and this is nothing but summation mod C n n prime square. Now, we have seen that n prime could be n plus or minus 1 and therefore, because of this I am going to have C n n plus 1 mod square plus C n n minus 1 mod square and these have been calculated. This is nothing but n plus 1 h cross over 2 m omega 0 plus n h cross over 2 m omega 0 which comes out to be therefore n plus a half h cross over m omega 0. What about v t prime v t square n n is going to be nothing but summation i omega n n prime c n n prime times i omega n prime n c n prime n. This is v square t t prime which is nothing but minus omega n n prime omega n prime n c n n prime mod square. Since 
omega n n prime is minus omega n prime n we get this equal to summation omega n n prime square mod c n n prime square and therefore taking n prime equals n plus minus 1 and all omega n n minus 1 to be omega 0 we get this whole thing to be equal to omega 0 square mod c n n plus 1 square plus omega 0 square mod c n n minus 1 square which is the same as for x square and therefore this value is also going to be equal to omega 0 square n plus a half h cross over m omega 0. So, you have gotten v, we have gotten omega 0 energy E and n is 1 half m v square plus 1 half m omega 0 square x square which then comes out to be 1 half m v square we have just calculated is nothing but omega 0 square n plus a half h cross over m omega 0 and the second term is 1 half m omega 0 square this is also n plus a half h cross over m omega 0. So, this comes out to be m cancels so does one of the omega zeros same thing here and you get n plus a half h cross omega 0 that is the energy. So, according to Heisenberg's quantum mechanics then we get E for the nth level to be equal to n plus a half h cross omega 0 notice n equal to 0 gives E 0 to be h cross omega 0 by 2 it is not zero energy as in the classical sense or even in Wilson's Sommerfeld quantum conditions. The lowest energy, the ground state energy is h cross omega 0 by 2. This is known as zero point energy. And delta E is still h cross omega 0 or h nu 0, which it should be if it were to reproduce the black body radiation formula. So, that comes out correctly and the energy has this zero point energy, but what Heisenberg has been able to do in all this is calculate the energy purely from quantum mechanical considerations, where the quantum mechanical quantities are expressed as matrices, quantum conditions and equation of motion help you determine these coefficients that he proposed. What about the rate of energy coming out or dE dt when transition is made from n to n minus 1 and that gives you Einstein's A coefficient also. Remember we had earlier calculated it using correspondence principle. So, let us do that d e n 2 n minus 1 by d t I am going to use the classical formula is going to be given as time averaged of 2 thirds e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 acceleration raised to acceleration square divided by c cubed. This is the formula we had used and when I take the average, I take the average of this, this comes out to be 1 third e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 omega I will write n to n minus 1 raised to 4 amplitude square divided by c cubed. 
Now we have already seen that omega n n minus 1 or all these things are the same as omega 0. So, this is going to be 1 third e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 omega 0 raised to 4 amplitude square n to n minus 1 transition amplitude divided by c cubed. What about this amplitude? Again go back to the classical scene and I will say that the x t was written as summation c tau e raised to i tau omega for the nth level t which could be written as taking c to be real as 2 c tau cosine of tau omega t. In the quantum mechanical sense then I am going to write that the amplitude n to n minus 1 is going to be 2 c n n minus 1 making that correspondence and this implies that a n n minus 1 square is going to be 4 times c n n minus 1 square which we have already calculated to be 4 h cross over 2 m omega 0. So, this comes out to be 2 h cross over m omega 0. I will substitute this in the formula here and get d e by d t n to n minus 1 to be equal to 1 third e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 omega 0 raised to 4 over c cubed and for a n square I get 2 h cross over m omega 0. Let us cancel a few terms. This omega 0 gives me omega 0 cubed and therefore, I get this 2 I can bring in front and therefore, I can write d e d t transition from n to n minus 1 is equal to 2 thirds e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 omega 0 cubed h bar over m c cubed. And recall that this is also equal to h cross omega 0 times the Einstein coefficient for a to n n minus 1 and this immediately gives me the answer that the Einstein coefficient n minus 1 is going to be 2 thirds e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 omega 0 square over m c cubed there is an n also because the c n factor has n and this is precisely the answer we had obtained earlier. So, quantum mechanically we have also calculated this through a purely quantum mechanical calculation. So, let me now conclude this lecture on Heisenberg's application of his equation to harmonic oscillator and write. So, this is basically Heisenberg's approach to quantum mechanics we will conclude number 1 express kinematic quantities as matrices and that is done because we want to formulate problem only in terms of observables time independent quantities are represented by diagonal matrices, then equation of motion is classical 
and quantum condition expressed in terms of the matrix elements. So, this is the conclusion of Heisenberg's approach. This was made more general and put on a stronger footing and something called the matrix mechanics to which I will just give you a brief introduction in the next lecture.